Hello, 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 real estate agents in Arizona. This is the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with Joey Sampaga. Uh, the man with the plan. Yes, man. How's you. it going over there? Doing phenomenal. Good. Thank you. We are the real estate marketing maniacs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a little deeper. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, um, we're excited to have Jake Krabby back in the house. Yes, um, Jake. One of our top sponsors for the Weekly Closer. You can find all his information right there at theweeklycloser.com. So go check it out. If you missed last month's episode, it was a lot of fun. It was. They always are. Make yeah. sure to check that one out, too. There's a lot of uh, Fannie Mae updates that Jake went over in that episode and some cool single property websites yes. that Academy's using now to help the agents get their properties out there and get them seen. So uh, make sure to reach out to Jake. Hey, you know what? I hear that you have um, you have a birthday coming up. Oh, we're so close. <laughs> 29th, the big 3 0. 3 0. Okay, you're going somewhere, right? Going to Vegas. You have Vegas. to, right? Uh, Vegas. You have to go to Vegas, right? <laughs> a little right. guys' weekend trip. All right. All so right. it should be fun. I haven't been to Vegas in a while. All right. Well, business has been good, so I'm sure that you're going to take a little extra cash. Yeah, maybe. You know, I, li- right. I like crap. So don't, don't tell me you just go to the show. No, no. no. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a show in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have craps tables here in Arizona. It drives me. I don't like the electronic ones. I like oh, throwing the dice. That's the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Throwing the dice. Yeah, so. I've never played that. Oh, so. we'll yeah. get the craps fun. Is it? Uh, just play. It looks complicated. It, it looks complicated it because the, so the middle is where it takes all your money. Keep your stuff on the outside. That's what I always tell <laughs> is people. Is that what it yep, is? Yep, play the pass line. Huh. Maybe play six and eight. A couple, But as soon as you start getting those little bets in the middle, that's where they really take your money. Oh, there you go. Play, play the outside. Good advice right there. Uh, you're, and, you're and glad you want, your team you want to take right? a, a rookie with you, too. So you, probably, you always have that rookie luck. Oh, the really? first time. So the first time, you're always going to win money. There you go, Jeff. Yeah. What? You can tag along. Yeah, you can tag along. You, you, you can be our rookie roller. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, what, what weekend is that? I think, Joey, I think you and I will be... We're well, Joey's headed, got a birthday, too. N- well, I think yes, we'll be I headed do. on a cruise. We're doing not, a, not together. No, no. Oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, sorry about that. Let me re- My wife and I and Joey and his wife... There you go. ...going on a cruise. Um, we're actually teaching a class. Yes, um, we are. It's a uh, real estate cruise, believe it or not. Oh, so cool. it's it's cool. Uh, agents can... It's a full week. The uh, What is it? The, the Mexican Riviera. That's right. Okay. Um, you can get your full 24-hour credits on this cruise wow. if you take. So it's it's kind of cool. We're going to be teaching a class on social media. It'll be fun. Yep, that's cool. Anyway, we'll uh, share some of that. I'm sure when we get back on a later yeah. episode. But uh, so tell us to um, you have your own radio yeah, show. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let, let me hear about that. Yeah, just past our two-year anniversary actually of that oh, show. It's called uh, Valley Real Estate News. Is the name of the show. It's okay. on 960 The Patriot. Airs every Saturday, 12 to 1. And uh, it's just all about real estate, mortgage, pretty yeah. much anything finance, anything in our little community, right? I've had insurance agents on, contractors, landscapers, good. you name it. Right. Um, so always looking for good guests. So if anybody out there ever has you know any interest in, in coming on the show. Some cool stuff maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Got something fun to present. Have somebody come on and talk about all the, the really weird MLS pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes... Yeah. No, there's there's crazy <laughs> stuff out there. You're, you're gonna want to do that one the visual, probably, <laughs> right? But, uh, anyway, hey, let's let's break into uh, appraisals. Yeah. So there's a lot of chatter. Been a little bit of hot button. Yeah, about appraisals happening. Yeah. So, and I know. Well, let's just let you you say what's kind of so, going on. So so the biggest thing is is we we have seen lately uh, a high number of appraised values coming in low. And, hmm. and they've they've ranged. We've had some big ones, but it's a lot of like little stuff. You know, five, ten thousand, just enough to make it really inconvenient yeah. <laughs> for the deal, right? right? And there's there's a couple reasons for that. One, obviously, the market's really hot, low inventory, and and we're really pushing, yeah. right? That's competitive for buyers. We got bidding wars, yeah. which I which I totally get. I think the bigger one that's really starting to come into play is. Um, how the appraisers are actually complete, completing their reports. And there's okay. one big change, and there was kind of a big hubbub about it maybe a year, 18 months ago, um, where Fannie Mae started doing these these valuations kind of on the back end. And every appraisal now gets what they call a CU score. It's graded one to five. Um, and I can never remember if lower is better or higher is better. I think lower is better, but I, don't, I can never remember. Okay. Um, but one of the big changes in that is it used to be where they valued um, homes that were a shorter time frame. So they wanted something six months or more recent. And they allowed them to kind of expand that search area a little bit wider to get that. Well, that's now shifted to where they've said, 
we want homes in closer proximity and we don't care so much about the time frame. Hmm. So now appraisers are going as much as a year out hmm. and finding homes that are closer. And I think that's really... Uh, well, that would make sense. It's kept that values would down. Definitely hurt the, the. They'll do time of time of sale adjustments, yeah. but it's usually not enough. You know, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't do it justice to where you know you've got this home and it's in one community and maybe a half mile away. Mm -hmm. There's two or three homes that really support our value that yeah. sold within the last 30 days. Right. But now the appraiser is saying, well, I've got this home that sold 11 months ago that's across the street. I think this is a better comparable. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that's that's kind of kept values down. Down a little bit and, and it's been a lot of fr we've had a lot of frustrated agents we get frustrated as well and it's really the appraisers uh, they're trying to get those low scores or high scores whichever well, one's whichever better one, whichever one's to, better score better whatever. yeah exactly because yeah. what happens is is they run these through and get the CU score and Fannie Mae basically spits out here's these other four comps that we think you should have used explain yeah. why you didn't and, and it gets tough. So the appraisers are trying to be more conservative and not have to go back and do that Got extra it. work. Okay. So it's kind of like a uh, uh, getting an Amazon rating yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Or the uh, reviews, right? Yeah, exactly. And if they get too many low or higher, whatever, whatever the, the bad one Yeah, whatever is, the bad one is. Um, then they can be, well, they might not be... Yeah, like I don't. I don't know what in the mix. Yeah, possibly, I don't know what right? kind of re reprimand there is for them. I don't know if they get docked points or I, I don't know the the intricacies of that. Um, I just know that you know that that's been a big change for us. Um, I think they automatically make them move their business from Arizona, which right? Is, uh, you know, a lot of movement in the market to. Yeah, maybe out to Kansas. Or yeah, something. there no. you go. Back back to <laughs> that Iowa. Way, that way, it's pretty flat. Yeah, it's pretty just standard appraisal. Right? Yeah, they same, can't, me can't mess it up. Same house sells for the same no, price yeah. year after year. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No. Um, well, that's that's interesting. So this appraisal thing too. Uh, you know, I was hearing somebody talk uh, not too long ago, and so the buyer. So the options are the buyer has to come in with the excess, come in with or the difference. they agree to split somehow. Yeah, right? low, lower um, the sales price, or the deal could probably just fall out. Yeah, unfortunately, and that's that's what happens quite yeah. a bit. You know, especially if there's a big enough difference. You know, or the seller really needs those proceeds. You know, they're hoping yeah. for a cash offer, or hoping somebody's going to pay over the appraised value. Right, so right. it definitely uh, so I wonder, throws a wrench in the game plan. So that, so that brings up a question then: if if that appraisal was done. And let's say that deal falls out. Somebody else comes along, and another appraisal is ordered within two weeks of that last one falling out. Is there anything that – are they looking at what the previous appraiser – nope. I mean, like like Fannie Mae, would they look at any nope. – no? O only FHA. It's and the FHA the only side, one. right? F have... FHA sticks with the property for 120 days. Okay. Other than that, it's like the other appraisal never even happened. And oh, we, we have had okay. some success where we can, there is a process to actually dispute the first appraisal report yeah. and get a whole nother one done. Right. It's a little bit of a lengthy process. We first have to submit comps, um, have the appraiser do a reconsideration of value. They have to address our comps. Then we actually take it to our appraisal department. We have uh, licensed appraisers that work for us in our okay. corporate office. And they review these appraisal reports and they'll say, yeah, I agree. There's there's some stuff, you know, wrong here. This could be different. They'll throw out the first one and let us order a second one entirely. Right, right. We've, ha we've had some success with that. We've had some not success with that. Got it. Okay. All right. Now, you mentioned before the show that not only this appraisal thing going on here, yeah. but also with um, what are the, what are the property inspection like waivers? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what about that? Yeah, so, let's, so, let's hear that so one. we're like uh, maybe six months into Fannie Mae kind of offering this, and in the latest Fannie Mae ten point one that we talked about last month, um, they kind of expanded that a little bit. So on conventional loans, you have to have. Uh, at least a, a 90% LTV, but we're really only seeing them with at least 20% down or 20% equity. Yeah. It, it, basically, you put in the subject property address, and when they run DU, run the automated underwriting system, Fannie Mae is doing their valuation of that property, and based on the sales price or value that you plugged in, it might just tell you, yeah, we agree. You have the ability to waive an appraisal mm. if you want. And then the buyer or the refinancer has the ability to basically sign a form that says, I waive my ability or waive my right to an appraisal. Yeah. It's pretty handy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I would say with some built-in equity, it's probably not. Yeah. Not it's not a lot a of risk. risk really. Yeah. It's definitely not a lot of risk. And, and talking to my colleagues around the country, 
other places are seeing them more frequently than we are in Arizona because we are such a rapidly appreciating market. Yeah. Some of these other places that are really stable, you know, out in the Midwest where home prices don't vary that much. Right. They get them a little bit more than we do. Again, we're always pushing that envelope, you know, trying to boost prices up. Yeah, but, absolutely. But we're seeing them, especially okay. on refinances. All right. All right. You also mentioned, too, and I, I know we'll move into the next uh, segment here, but you mentioned... Um, some refinance programs, I don't know if it's purchasing programs or not, but less documentation required? Yeah, so it's called it's called Day One Certainty okay. through Fannie Mae, and it's uh, purchases and, and refinances both. Okay. Uh, basically, we utilize a, a service called the Work Number, which is owned by Equifax, and about 70 to 75% of employers actually report to the Work Number now, Okay. all the employment data. So we'll go, and if their verification of employment is on there, we'll pull those figures, Fannie Mae will essentially um, say, yeah, those numbers work, and then no income documentation is required. No pay stubs, no W-2s, no tax returns, none of that stuff, which, which is great for our borrowers. It's making it easier and easier um, for them, less documentation. And we're, we're close to having that for assets as well. We're going to have the same thing where they'll actually, the borrower will be able to say, yep, do my assets as well. They'll actually go to their bank, grab their bank statements on their behalf. Got it. A lot of less legwork for the borrowers, easier for us, and it's great because there's not a lot of human error, right? We yeah. can't calculate the income wrong, or we can't miss something on a pay stub, or things like that that, that cause us issues post-close. Got it. Got it. Okay. Lots of changes. Lots of changes, and, and changes for the better, which yeah. which I like, because we've kind of just been so hard to right. qualify and so tedious for home buyers and uh, we want it to get easier. We don't want it to get too crazy, you know, this stated income stuff. This Again, this is um, income that can be verified. Right. It's not somebody just making up numbers. We're going and verifying the, the, these yeah. calculations. Oh, oh, so I can't say I'm, I work at fast food, but I make 10000 a month. You can't. <laughs> okay. You, you can <laughs> say that, but we're going to go ahead and verify that uh, and say, no, that's not true. <laughs> you, you mean I can't just state that, but then verify some assets? Uh, say I have 500000 in the bank. Yeah. No. Oh wait, I have to verify that too. Don't yeah. I? Nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> well, what about the ninja loans? No, <laughs> ninja doesn't loans. doesn't work. I don't uh, think we'll get back there. No, I, I don't think that. I, I mean, if we did, it yeah, it might get a little messy. Yeah. Um, I call. I talked to my dad last night, and I told him. I said, "Hey, if we ever get back to that point, I'll call you and tell you. Let you, you know go. the world's coming to the end again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go. I got the inside <laughs> scoop now. Sell your house. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, let's get into the ring with the maniacs again. Yeah, let's do and, it. And you know, let's just kind of. We're just going to kind of go with whatever comes yeah. up on this one. How about that? But first, wh- why don't you share, um, hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot here, but why don't you, uh, what are you seeing out there, kind of uh, the most successful agents, you know, that you're working with? What are they What are they doing yeah, are they to doing? be successful? Yeah. Any, I mean, what do you? It, it's it's the same thing for, for agents and, and loan officers and everybody. I mean, it's, it's that. A, having a business plan, yeah, right? Having a plan of action of what are you going to do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis for a whole year, you yeah. know, and, and forecasting that out. Right. And really having that plan, sticking to it and being consistent. If you're going to hold open houses and that's where you're getting business from, hold open houses four or five days a week. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be a social media master, get on social media, have good content that people like, record videos, go do home showcases, yeah. get out in your community and, and post that content and be consistent with it. Consistency is king. Yeah, right? I think that's the big yeah. thing that a lot of people miss. Like, man, I was really good yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, but then I took the rest of the week off. Yeah. Right. You know, right. and you just you, right. you don't get the reward it, yeah, it that, actually takes work, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to work, you slacker. <laughs> oh, I love that one. I always got to figure out a time to slip yeah. that one. There yeah, yeah, yeah. Do whatever. No, that's awesome, man. And I'm sure a lot of the agents that you're working with, both of you being really successful uh, mortgage real estate side. How about, um, have you been reading any cool books lately? Yeah, or? so so I, I've knocked out a call. I always read when I fly. It's so like every book I buy, you can find at the airport like those little oh, okay. Hudson yeah. booksellers yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That's where I always get my books. So um, the last couple I knocked out, uh, Seinfeldia. I'm a big Seinfeldia. Seinfeldia. I'm a big Seinfeld fan. Okay. And so this was all, they didn't interview any of the main characters, but it was all like writers and producers and people who had like one. So they interviewed like the real Jay Peterman because yeah. Jay Peterman's a real guy in real life. So yeah, they interviewed him. Okay. They interviewed the real Kenny Kramer. Because oh. he's he was Larry David's neighbor before they started the show, so a lot of cool you know stories behind the scenes right. stuff. 
loved that one. Um, and then I also just finished reading, like just finished reading, um, I believe it's called Giant of the Senate, and it's written by Al Franken, hmm. who uh, is a Minnesota senator, yeah. and uh, he got his start through Saturday Night Live. And so he was a comedian his entire career. He's from Minnesota, and then like the side of the run for senator. So it was really interesting, his background, and then running, getting into politics, and then it touched, I mean, like he just finished it. So Trump was in office by the time he finished the book. Got it. So a lot of insights into know how the senate works and his take on he's a he's a pretty liberal guy he's a liberal democrat you know but it did not a lot of bias in it yeah you know you could kind of he believed in what he did and so it was cool it was funny you know because he definitely had that comedic standpoint that he was right. coming from right um so it's funny but also gave a lot of insight into sure. the government and all that stuff works so that's cool I, I read those books and then I'll go and like read the entrepreneur like business <laughs> book and then so I sure. get one of those done I'm like I'm gonna go read some fun stuff yeah and then always just trying to pick up different things all right all right on the plane so you travel quite a bit I do it's you it's, it's been a travel year the flight to Vegas is gonna be short yeah. so well, <laughs> I yeah. probably won't get a book book in then but I do have uh October coming up, we're flying out to Chicago, see an Iowa Hawkeye game. Me and my college roommate go to a different uh, Iowa Hawkeye away game every year, so we're going to Northwestern okay. this All year. Right. That'll be fun. I always go home for Christmas, too. So. All right. Well, on your Vegas flight, maybe I can find him a minimalist book to read. There you go. There you go. Maybe 10 pages. Yeah, 10 pages. Short, sweet, to the point, minimalist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one, one book that is, it's, it's short. Very, I mean, you could probably read it on that flight. It's called The Greatest Salesman in the World oh, by okay. uh, O.G. Mandino. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like it's kind of like my salesman Bible. Oh, I love wow, that man. one. So any real estate agents out there as well, I would highly recommend that book if you're okay. looking for like the the motivation to get out there and yeah. and kick butt. Yeah, greatest salesman cool, in man. the world. That's awesome. Thanks for being here again. Yes. Love it. You know, it's always fun. Yeah, uh, we just have fun. We may have to do an episode where we don't even talk business. That's yeah. cool. That'd be awesome. I always want to do that on the radio. I get to Actually, talk about Hawkeye sports. I'm like, yeah, let's just talk about this. You know, October. <laughs> you know what that one should be. Tell us about everything that happened in Vegas. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that'll be a good one. That'll be a good one. <laughs> All right. No pictures. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Well, thanks for coming in. Um, you know, agents that are listening, again, I always want to make sure that they know how to get in contact with you. So, Yep, 480-442-9291. Shoot me an email, jake at academymortgage.com. Right. Click the banner. Awesome. There we go. And the Real Estate Marketing Maniacs, you know, you can always go to realestatemarketingmaniacs.com where we have our membership site for agents. Uh, that's less than a hundred bucks a year to get yes. access to our training on social media and digital strategies. Did I say under a hundred bucks? I did. Okay, you did. Anyway, well, hey, until next time, this is Jeff Underwood and Joey Sampaga signing off from Security Title Studios. Have a great day. Take care. Adios. The Weekly Closer Podcast is sponsored by Jake Crabby, NMLS number 877141 at Academy Mortgage. Are you looking to buy or refinance a home? Jake Crabby is your mortgage professional. Contact Jake at 480-442-9291. Jake Crabby is a loan officer at Academy Mortgage, NMLS number 877141. State license for Arizona number 0920357. AZBK number 0904081 and New Mexico number 877141. Academy Mortgage Corporation NMLS 3113 and New Mexico 01451. Call 480-442-9291. Address 15333 North Pima Road, Suite 205, Scottsdale, Arizona 85260. Academy Mortgage is an equal housing.